Hello everyone, this is Ray Space, and welcome to some rocket recovery in Kerbal Space Program 1.12, a realism overhaul. I have been trying to recover the Kasei rocket you see here on a drone ship. I posted a video with my own script trying to do that, or at least trying to land safely in a spot in the ocean before splashing down and disintegrating, of course. That's what happens in Kerbal when you smack into the ocean. But uh, Pekka, my frequent collaborator on things, uh, who has previously made a script that got super heavy to chopsticks and then the chopsticks safely recover super heavy, has uh, kindly produced a script to help me out here with the Kasei rocket. And so that's what we see here. The dialogue is similar to the one he created with the super, with the super heavy and works somewhat similar but of course Super Heavy was going back to the launch site. We are trying to use a drone ship out in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico because our payload needs to be maximized. We're currently carrying about 90 tons to low Earth orbit so that is the goal. Without reusability this can do 95 tons to low Earth orbit safely so we're not saving that much for the whole recovery bit. It's about 200 meters per second before we decouple off of the upper stage and that amounts to about 800 meters per second here. So I'm using the grid fins and landing legs from Pekka's Falcon 9 mod and those are good obviously and uh, will work well with Pekka's re-entry script so that is important. Here we see the firefly effects here. One of the complications of recovering the Kasei rocket is that in this configuration it can't hover. The There are five engines at the bottom they each produce 400 tons of thrust and can throttle down to 40%. So the minimum thrust is 160 tons of thrust. So we are already below that mass. So if it doesn't successfully do the what's called a suicide burn, which is the one time chance to land, it'll start going up. It, it just can't hover. So that is a complication. It'd be nicer if it could hover. I offered Pekka uh, change to the design of the Kasei rocket using seven engines instead of just five, which would also mean that the engines have less thrust, which would potentially make it possible for it to hover. But he said he could do it without the hovering, and so we will see that here. Now, I don't have the drone ship in position yet. I'll get it in position after this one. Uh, Pekka told me the coordinates it's aiming for, and I'll type those coordinates in. I'm not going to use the uh, location that ended up, though it turns out it was ending up in the right place. But we were here seeing whether it would successfully do a burn that slowed it down enough, and it seems like it did slow down enough. The lining legs should be able to take the brunt of that. And there it is, flopping down. Actually, relatively safe safely, except I think we lost the engines. So. The drone ship is in its own drone ship group, and Pekka tells me the coordinates here. Note that it's only to four digits in the decimal places, and probably what we need to do is increase the accuracy to maybe five or six digits, potentially, and I'll show you why. But here I'm saving the group, and then I make sure that the drone ship's at zero, zero. So after we've got the group set up, and I make sure that its coordinates are correct. The drone ship is at zero, zero, and we also need to make sure that's actually down to the ocean. So it seems to be hovering above there. And along its way down, it actually destroys the rocket. We couldn't really see the rocket, but it clearly destroyed something there. I don't know why the arrows are sort of offset, you know, it's sort of below the ship, but that's neither here nor there. It's interesting that Enable Colliders is off, it should be on, but it clearly has the colliders active, so probably not a problem. I pick up the pieces of the previous attempt in the tracking station before then launching again, and now we will see whether it actually makes it to the drone ship. Now my normal sort of standard for figuring out whether something is okay and I'm just going to assume that it's going to stay okay is that it has to work three times in a row. So we're not going to get to that in this video, but we are working on it. And actually we would have gotten to it in this video if not for a change that I made that I'll show you in a bit. So here we are. It goes down to one engine before separating from the second stage here. The second stage is not recoverable here, but maybe I'll do something fancy with that business later on. 
Alright, so the dialog pops up, and it pops up when we click the control lower stage option in the upper stage script. So once you click that, it'll go to here instead of controlling the upper stage. So here it's coming down. That dialog with the KOS doesn't need to be up, the green text dialog. That's just for troubleshooting. Uh, because Pekka wanted to know this is all during the live stream and Pekka wanted to know the numbers there It's showing the numbers at different altitudes for where it's it is relatively speaking so That's just a troubleshooting thing as we see the firefly effects here Very nice. I look forward to putting a camera on board. You can see that it does overheat a bit uh, I didn't completely cheat that or anything and we see the drone ship there now the question is whether it's actually going to land. And the fun part is, while doing this, I had no idea, so it was all lots of suspense. I'll show the descents uncut after we get into the Firefly effect range. We do have clouds, these are just 2D clouds. These are not the volumetric clouds by Blackrack, these are just how it is with uh, RSS visual enhancements. I might have made some changes to it a long, long time ago, I forget. There is no braking burn. Pekka was trying to avoid that in order to maximize the payload. I said I was okay with just 85 tons of payload, but Pekka was very insistent on trying to get the 90 tons to orbit. Uh, the regular payload capacity of the rocket is 95 tons, so we're using very little fuel here. And there is residuals in Realism Overhaul here, so there's about 1% of fuel that the rocket simply cannot use. Alright, it landed on the deck. It went into the deck a little bit, and it seems like the reason for that is that Kerbal Constructs, which I used to place the drone ship, uh, it sort of fudges things a little bit. The accuracy of the position of things is a little bit on the vague side. It's like to the nearest meter or something like that. So yeah, that's a bit of a problem. In particular, my logo on the ship isn't showing up right now. I'll fix that later. So having this be so accurate, we decided to scale down the drone ship. Uh, Pekka wanted it to 1.5, but I decided that a uh, scale of 2 would be a little bit more visually appealing. It seems like 1.5 might be looking a little bit awkward because of the size of the rocket. We do have a big rocket here. It's 8.4 meters in diameter. Um, I believe scale 1 would be the size of the Blue Origin drone ship. But I'm not sure. I'll have to double check that. It seems a bit small considering the New Glenn rocket would also be 7 meters so it would look pretty big. So, with now the newly downscaled drone ship, we will try again. And it's going to the same inclination. I intend to keep going to that inclination of the Kasei rocket, because that's the inclination to line up with the moon. It's 28.5 degrees. So, this Tampico that I'm launching from, it is Mexico. Uh, it is where I placed my space center. And that's related to the TIPA timeline that I've talked about in previous videos, my future history timeline, my story of what will happen that probably won't happen is centered on the Space Center at Tampico. That doesn't mean that SpaceX things aren't going to go on and Blue Origin things aren't going to go on and then there's other people's, but it is just a fictional situation not including the things that have already been planned. So I wanted to avoid the big players, that's why I'm launching out of Tampico. But there's a whole explanation for how that works out that I won't cover here. Here we go, and do we see the drone ship? Well, okay, I see it there now. If you wanted heavy editing, my apologies, but I decided it would be best to have the full effect of the suspense and so produce this video without cutting the descent at any time. That does mean that there will be awkward turns of the camera, so apologies for that. So, will it make it? 
That is the question. I decided to drop the UI. Actually, in the future attempts, I will have the UI off for most of it. It is trying to hit a spot, you can tell by the way it's leaning. There is a particular coordinate that it's going for. But here it ends up going off to the side, as you can see. Now, I had talked about the accuracy of our coordinates, right? It's only four decimal places. And that's about 10 meters. The fourth decimal place is about 10 meters. So it could be about 10 meters off, potentially. But still, it would be sort of on the edge of the deck in that case. Knowing there might be a coordinate accuracy problem, I asked Becca if you wanted me to shift the ship up a little bit, a little bit further north to where the rocket seemed to be trying to go. Uh, but he said no. I decided instead to shift it up a little bit because I want my Rays Aerospace logo to show up. Or actually it's a general Rays logo. There's a separate sort of Rays Aerospace logo that's meant for the tails of vehicles. It's just a triangular part. But here I'm just... You can see how the buildings sort of snap to different levels as I shift it. There, finally the little monogram shows up there. But yeah, the monogram is so thin that it only shows up at a certain height. <laughs> so I set it to that height so we get that. Alright, but without shifting the ship left, right, or forward and back, we try it again. So the ship's position is the same. This time I got some atmospheric shots without the UI. So there's the core alone can say, and with the 90 ton payload, but of course we want to be able to vary the payload a little bit. So we'll have to have the drone ship location for different payloads. And I'll figure that out as we go along. I might just keep them stationed along the way. As long as they're not in visual range of each other, I'll just have a bunch of drone ships instead of like deploying them each time separately. Uh, you know, in real life, they would send the drone ship to the place, but with global constructs, we will just place them. There's a certain amount of roleplay that we can do, but that's not. The, but I'm not a ship manager, so we are going to skip that part of the roleplay. So here we are coming down. As far as how far away it can target something, as long as we tell it the coordinates, whether it can shift its position like a few kilometers, it seems like Pekka thinks it can. So even if we had the drone ship maybe five kilometers away from where it is right now, as long as the rocket is told that it has to go there, it should be able to get there. So that's my understanding from what Pekka said. We will have to test that. It's really the end phase accuracy that's some of an issue, and it wouldn't be as much of an issue if the rocket could hover, of course. If we could get the rocket to hover and then go down a little bit, much like Super Heavy did when trying to get to the chopsticks, then it wouldn't be such a problem. But because it has to keep going down all the way, that produces more inaccuracy and in terms of the exact final landing location. So it can adjust a lot by the way it tilts early on high in the atmosphere using its aerodynamics. So that will produce the larger changes from, you know, one kilometer here, one kilometer there. It's just this last bit where it'd be nice if it could hover and then adjust back to the ship, where right now, because of the configuration of the rocket, it can't do it. But we agreed to shift the ship a little bit here, so I do that. I think I shifted it a little bit too much. It looks, if you take a look at the dialogue there, 34.2 meters. 
is how much I shifted it. Probably I should have just shifted it maybe 10 meters and tried it like that. Because again, that's the sort of fudge range that we have on the coordinates. But overall, it certainly seems like the script is accurate to within 50 meters. We can see that much. If you're wondering why the ship is not oriented the other way so that it, the rocket has the benefit of the long direction of the ship, it's because I don't want the rocket to accidentally clip the buildings. So it goes railing to railing instead of between the buildings. I don't want it to land on one of the buildings or anything like that. So that's another downside that we are orienting the ship like that so that it doesn't do something weird because we're not using as much length as the ship could possibly provide. But, yeah. This is the direction it has to be able to deal with. We also don't want the rocket to torch the buildings, so... Just in theory. So here the rocket is coming in for the last attempt in this video. Will it finally make the downscale drone ship? And that's the point that I made earlier in the video that if I hadn't downscaled the drone ship it probably would have landed all of the times. So it's only because it's smaller now compared to the first time that it didn't land on attempts 2 and 3 in this video. Or sorry, 3 and 4. We missed the first one but there was no drone ship. Attempts 2 and 3 with the drone ship there I mean. So it made attempt 1 with the drone ship there, it missed 2 and 3, and here's attempt 4. Coasting in through the clouds. The clouds add a little bit of a mystery. I will try this with volumetric clouds. We'll see how scenic that might be. Also with cameras on the rocket, of course. Maybe a camera on the drone ship too. Well, that I can't do actually. Because Kerbal Constructs... We can't have a camera on the Kerbal Constructs part. We would have to have an actual ship... Uh, a ship that is a part rather than a Kribal Constructs static. I should have gotten my cursor out of the way. Anyway. Normally I hide the cursor on this and that. There I go. So it's actually off to the other side, so I didn't have to shift the ship that much, potentially. Slides a little bit though. Anyway, so success. Sometimes. Well, I think it'll be much more successful now. But I also have to test it with different payloads and there's other things to test. But for now, there you have it, folks. With that, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.